Hey everyone, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you could create your own index fund by coding a train bot in Python. And we're actually going to see how it perform if we gave it a hundred million theoretical dollars. So make sure to stay to the end to see how it does. This video is sponsored by QuantConnect. It's the platform we're going to be using to create and backtest our strategy. So you can sign up for a free account using the link in the description below. So it is probably best to start off with what an index fund is actually trying to achieve as it is a passive investment strategy and is therefore not making any active investment decisions. It is aiming to replicate the index that it follows. So SPY, SPY, is an ETF issued by State Street and it aims to follow the S&P 500 index as close as it can. And the way that this ability is assessed and the number that fund managers are trying to minimise is something called tracking error. This is also called your active risk and it's the standard deviation between the difference of your portfolio returns and your benchmark returns. Now there's a fair assumption to expect that our portfolio returns will be the same as our benchmark returns as we're following the index which is our benchmark. But this isn't going to be the case. Transaction costs are going to make a difference as when there are changes to the index or inflows and outflows to the fund then we're going to be trading these stocks and therefore incurring transaction costs which is going to make a difference in our portfolio returns compared to the benchmark returns and therefore increase tracking error. Another obvious factor is management fees, which are the fees that charge you by the fund to invest your capital for you. Other factors that cause difference and increase tracking error include cash drag. This is the difference in performance made by the time between when we receive cash and reinvest it. Another difference could be potential illiquid stocks with high bid ask spreads, which means that we're not going to be able to get them at index price and therefore that's another performance difference. And there's another factor which a lot of retail investors probably overlook, so we'll cover that at the end with a special backtest to illustrate the point. Right, so now we know what we're actually trying to achieve with an index fund, let's jump into the QuantConnect platform and actually code and create one ourselves. So you can see that we're on the QuantConnect platform now, and the first thing that we want to start off with is actually finding out our constituents of the index that we're following. So in this example, we're going to be following the S&P 500 and a way that we can find out the constituents and get up-to-date information on the constituents of the S&P 500 is by using this data set from QuantConnect, the US ETF constituents. And this has the constituents of the S&P 500 tracker SPY, the one that we were talking about earlier, the ETF issued by State Street. So we've got SPY here already. So let's just say self dot spy equals the symbol of this dot symbol and we're actually going to be taking this at hourly resolution now let's hop over and have a look at the documentation here we can see that we use this ETF constituents filter so let's copy this across let's get rid of that and paste this in and we're going to be looping through these constituents but instead we're going to do a quick dictionary comprehension and say self dot weights equals c dot symbol that's going to be the key, so the, the actual stock in the index, and then C dot weight. 4C in constituents. There we go. So this is just going to have our weight as the stock and then the weight of the stock in the index. Very simple. Uh, let's have a look how we actually incorporate this into our algorithm in the initialize function. Let's go a bit further up and we can see that we want to take self .add universe. let's take the universe settings as well actually I'm going to take that, drop that cross, we want that as hourly resolution and here we go, self.universe.etf, self.spy take our universe settings and this constituents filter function that we created down here brilliant, so what are we actually going to do with those weights? Well, of course, we want to trade to them. So let's create a function here that we're going to call rebalance. And that's going to take self. And all we're going to do here is loop through that weights dictionary that we've created, check that they're all in our universe, there aren't going to be any issues, and then set our holdings to the weights specified. So for symbol weights in self dot weights dot items. We're going to check if symbol is in self.active securities. Okay, just a double check there. If it is, then self.set holdings, the symbol, and then the weight. 
super easy. So this here is market cap weighted. Now we need to find a way of running this function and we're gonna say we're gonna rebalance at the start of every week. So let's just head into the documentation. Let's look at our algorithm reference and scheduled events just so we can get all of our date time rules and our time rules. So let's just have a scroll down here and have a look. Let's just grab this one go like this, just paste it in, very simple. And we want not the month start, but the week start. And we're gonna say aftermarket open, let's say an hour after. And just to keep things consistent, let's set this to our symbol rather than the ticker. Great, and this is rebalance. Awesome, so now we've just scheduled that rebalance function to run every week at the start by passing in self.spy here. We're making sure that it's an actual trading day. And then an hour after market open, we're gonna run this and rebalance our portfolio to the specified weights. Now, just as a precaution, just to cover any holes, I'm gonna drop in this function. And this function here just goes through the security, see if there are any changes. If, if any securities have been taken out, then it's going to liquidate the security as it's no longer in the index and it's just gonna delete it from that weights dictionary so that we don't trade to it. So the thing that we have to do now is set the date. So I'm gonna run it from 2012, set the amount of cash. So we said we do it with 100 million. So let's add three more zeros onto the end. And now we just have to backtest it. Okay, so here we can see a backtest that I ran earlier. And we can see the numbers, so 303% return since 2012. And we can look at our biggest volumes of stock. So as this market cap weighted, obviously Apple, Amazon, Microsoft are our top three stocks that we were invested in over the past nine years. Scrolling down, we can see the drawdown. So we can see that huge one in the coronavirus crisis of down 28.5%. And we get down to some statistics here. And the number that we were talking about earlier, tracking error, which is the number that we want to minimize, is here. And you can see it's 0.015, so 1.5%. And if we perfectly tracked it, then that would be zero. Another number to look at is the beta. A uh, beta of one means that when the stock market moves up by one, then our portfolio would move up by one. When it moves down by one, our portfolio would move down by one. So how can we actually compare these numbers? So S&P 500 is a market cap weighted benchmark, which is what we have tried to replicate here, what happens if we actually equally weight the stocks? So going into this back test here, we can actually have a look at the code and we've made a change here. And instead of setting it to the weight, we simply set it to equal weighting. So one over the number of stocks. So giving each stock an equal weight in the index. So what we're gonna see here with our asset sales volumes, we're gonna get all of the oldest stocks are going to be our most invested in as we are equally weighted. So we can actually have a look down here, go into overview and have a look at the statistics. And we've got a much higher tracking error here of 0.048. So compare that to our 0.015, obviously we can see that we're taking more active risk. So there you go, that's what happens when we try to replicate an index and create our own index fund. We had a look with $100 million, but remember about that fact that I talked about earlier that can affect tracking error? Well, what happens if we run this with $100,000 rather than 100 million? So not only do we have higher fixed costs, so we have 27 grand in fees on the 100K one compared to 420, so bearing in mind this was a factor of 1,000 bigger. It's not a factor of 1,000, it's a factor of under 20 fees. So we've got higher fixed, fixed costs, and the main thing that I want to talk about here is the prices of the stocks, meaning that you can't be fully invested at market cap weighted. So if we have a look here, we can see our exposure and we're hovering around 85% to 90% invested. And that's because we can only invest in whole numbers. So we can only invest in two Apple stocks, whereas here we can invest in 1800 Apple stocks. And so we have a lot more play here. If we look here, we're pretty much at 98% to 100% invested all of the time on our $100 million portfolio. How does this affect our beta and our tracking error? So as we were still market cap weighted, our active risk was relatively low, but not as low as our $100 million portfolio. And then if we look at beta, we can see that our beta was 0.85 because most of the time we were only invested 85% of our capital. Now you can argue that fractional shares are obviously becoming a lot more mainstream 
and allow retail investors to take positions such as one and a half Apple shares or 2.2 Microsoft shares down to possibly the individual dollar, meaning that you would be able to fully invest your capital. But there are also the hidden costs of fractional shares, possibly being the spread that the broker charges. And these hidden costs will incur a tracking error hit as you are taking active risk in that regard. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it interesting to find out how to create your own index fund using Quant Connect and coding a trading bot in Python. Now you might ask, well, why don't I just put my money in SPY, in the ETF? Well, you can, but what I'm trying to show you here is how we can have that base of the index and then we can build upon that with our own factors and tilt our portfolio. So we can invest more in the stocks that we think have more potential and invest less in the stocks that we think we don't. So what we're going to be looking to do in future videos is beating this benchmark using some of our factors. I hope you learned something from this video and let me know down in the comments if you want any more clarification on some of the things that we covered, such as tracking error and beta. You can find the link to the code and the backtest in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe to stay tuned for the later videos where we're going to be trying to beat this index benchmark. Until then, happy coding.